The concept of a warp drive, despite its challenges, has inspired many individuals to pursue a career in physics, highlighting the impact of scientific ideas on personal aspirations. The concept of a warp drive violates the weak energy condition in general relativity, which states that all time-like observers must see a positive energy density. The energy release when a warp drive stops could be catastrophic, potentially obliterating entire planets. Causality violations, such as the creation of closed time-like curves, pose a significant problem for the development of warp drives. In 1994, physicist Miguel Alcubier wondered whether the fictional concept of a faster-than-light warp drive, such as the type depicted in Star Trek, could be described with the real physics of general relativity. Alcubier took Einstein's field equations shown here and did something rather unusual with them. Usually, one takes a set of masses and energies whose distribution is described within the stress energy tensor on the right-hand side, T mu nu, and then one calculates the corresponding curvature of space-time over here on the left-hand side, but Alcubier did the opposite. He started from a particular geometric structure, G mu nu, specifically in his case, a warp bubble, and then solved the corresponding masses and energies needed to make it happen. T mu nu. His solution, often called the Alcubier drive, has forever immortalized his name and sparked dozens of follow-up papers further investigating this topic. However, it's not really a drive. There's no blueprint for a spaceship here. Perhaps a better name would have been an Alcubierre solution or a field, but for whatever reason, the name has stuck, and so I will use it to write the rest of this video just for consistency. Alcubierre solution involves a central region where passengers would reside in ordinary flat space-time. Behind them, the fabric of space expands, though, and pushes the passengers forward, much like how the universe itself is currently expanding, thereby pushing galaxies apart from one another. Inside the bubble, the passengers can be stationary, yet the space within which they sit is moving, almost like an airport conveyor belt. So how do you warp space? Well, we already know that it's through mass, the same way the Sun, then space as Arthur Eddington proved in 1919, but here a carefully engineered ultra-thin shell of material is used, much like an eggshell that keeps space-time undisturbed, both inside the bubble and far away from it, and yet it distorts space-time in just the right way around the ship. The real genius of this idea is that although mass cannot accelerate past the speed of light, space itself has no such rule, and thus this central region containing the passengers could travel at arbitrarily fast speeds. As exciting as this is, we need to take a beat, because the fact that a solution exists does not imply that Alcubier drive is actually physically plausible. And yet, general relativity does not forbid such a machine. And so there was hope. However, this is one of those topics that gets sensationalized out of hand here on YouTube, and it can be difficult to figure out just how legitimate this idea is. So today, let's go through the most prominent obstacles to realizing Alcubierre's drive, coupled with some thoughts on how feasible it is that we could solve each of them. Let's take you to Alcubierre drive. Problem one, energy and mass requirements. One of the first complaints levied against the drive was that it required outrageous amounts of energy. For example, soon after Alcubierre's paper, Fenning and Ford estimated an injury requirement of something like 10 orders of magnitude, greater than the mass of the observable universe. But in 1997, Chris van den Breck slightly modified the warp bubble shape to pull the energy down to just three solar masses. Okay, this is still a ridiculous amount of energy. In the space of just three sure years, pure human ingenuity had reduced the engine demand for a warp drive, 
from 10 universes to just three stars. So imagine what might be possible with further refinement and research. Surely we could get this down to practical levels. Another issue is that the actual shell of material needs to be incredibly thin, typically approaching the Planck length in width. The Planck length is thought to be the smallest measurable length, and at this scale, the universe itself is believed to look more like a quantum foam, where known physics breaks down. So how severe of a problem is this? Despite the currently incomprehensible challenge of humanity ever reaching this kind of technical level, as far as we can tell, physics does not prohibit it. And so I think we would have to classify this as an engineering challenge of unimaginably high sophistication. Problem two, exotic matter. Whilst we're on the topic of energy requirements, there's one minor issue I forgot to mention. We need negative energy or interchangeably negative mass via E equals mc square. This was a problem recognized right from the outset of Alcubierre's original work and technically violates a rule in general relativity known as the weak energy condition, or WEC, that states that all time, like observers, must see a positive energy density. By the way, a time-like observer here means one who always moves forward in time and experiences a natural flow of time, similar to our own everyday experience of time passing. To give some credence to this violation, Alcubierre himself even wrote his only warp drive follower paper 27 years later that supports and explores this violation in much more detail. Violating the weak energy condition implies the existence of negative energy or mass. Now, unfortunately, we don't know of any particle with negative mass, but physics also doesn't prohibit one either, and hence such a particle would be described as exotic matter. The Casimir effect is a well-known example of a negative energy pressure caused by the quantum vacuum effect between two very close places, and it has been the lifeline of hope for many warp optimists. However, it's important to note that this is really a negative relative to the background vacuum energy. If you took that vacuum energy away, there'd be no negative effect so it's unclear whether this could be utilized for warping space. The widely held belief that Alcubierre drives violate the weak energy condition was challenged in a trifecta of papers in 2021, coming from Bobrick and Martiri, Fell and Heisenberg, and finally, Eric Lentz. Friends, what are your thoughts about this theory? Comment down below and subscribe to our channel for more similar videos like